Eight people are facing charges in a decades-long art fraud investigation. The OPP and Thunder Bay police seized 1,000 fraudulent works thought to uh, have been painted by Norval Morisot, an indigenous artist who is also known as Copper Thunderbird. Police say allegations that his name was being used to sell the fake pieces came to light shortly before Thunderbird's death in 2007. Some of the fraudulent work sold for tens of thousands of dollars. Eight people have now been arrested and are facing 40 charges in total. And for more on this, I'm joined by barrister and solicitor Jonathan Summer. Jonathan, thank you for your time tonight. You're welcome. Uh, so you've worked on as a trial lawyer on this case for years. I mean, what was your reaction today to hearing about the arrests and the charges? Uh, I'm elated. I mean, it's been a very long wait to see this happen. I've been working for 14 years to stop this fraud and to see... Uh, the police standing up on that stage today with all of those uh, paintings, it was fantastic. We've heard, you know, there have been a lot of uh, fraud involving art and scams. Uh, there's a lot of big money in art. How prevalent is art fraud in Canada and Ontario? Um, it's hard to estimate. Uh, art fraud crimes very seldom get investigated and even less frequently are charged. Um, the FBI in the U.S. has estimated that um, art crime in general represents the third biggest monetary area of crime after drugs and guns in the world. Um, so that may give an indication. Also, um, there are many experts in the international markets uh, for fine art who estimate that as much as 50, uh, 40 to 50 percent of artworks in the international markets are either fake or are somehow tainted with um, false statements or misrepresentations. Wow. I mean, you say that a lot of uh, fraud involving art is not investigated and there's rarely charges. Why do you think that is? Is it because it's hard to track what's who's behind it? I think there's a, a few reasons. That, that Certainly the difficulty is one of them. Um, I think there's a lot of police forces that are not that comfortable with um, trying to figure out whether artworks are real or not. Um, I think also uh, it's not, you know, generally, in this case, there is some violence connected with it, but generally speaking, it's not a violent crime. Um, and I would say, uh, I would say on top of that, there's a kind of mythology that goes along with art fraud, a mythology that this is a crime committed by charming rogues that we should perhaps admire. Um, it really is not the case when you get into it. It's a pretty ugly area, but that seems to be the perception. And ugly for those who are victimized in these cases. I mean, if someone uh, has a piece of art at home and now they're not sure, I mean, is there a way to tell if a piece of art is fake or if it's actually authentic? Well, if you're talking about pieces of art allegedly by Norval Morriso, there are some red flags. Uh, for example, if there's a black dry brush signature on the back, that's definitely a red flag. Um, there, beyond that, it gets more complicated because there are, there are fakes that have that black dry brush signature. There are some that don't. Um, and you get into the problem of needing an expert to look at it or forensic tests to be done. And what do you advise people to do if they do think that maybe they have a piece of art that is fake? Well, they can, they can contact my office. We are developing a process by which we can evaluate whether or not they fit into the problematic categories uh, and then give them advice on what you know, uh, remedies are available to them. Okay, Jonathan, so great to speak with you, especially because you were involved in this case. So I appreciate you taking the time tonight. You're very welcome. Thank you.